People should care because it is about the future. If we want to eat, we want to breathe, we want to live in the future, then we have to look after the sea. I spent every summer here, I'm 58, every summer up in the west coast in the water. And the one thing that I've really noticed over the time is that biodiversity has really, has really disappeared. Sea wilding started really in about 2018 and um, as a community we're very actively involved in the sea loch and there's a real interest to try and restore some of the things that have disappeared, things like seagrass and native oysters. So rather than just campaigning to try and stop things from happening, like scallop dredging happening in the loch, we wanted to actually get actively involved, pull on our sea boots and see what we could bring back. I used to be a wildlife photographer and wildlife um, guide, so my job was taking people out to amazing places and, and, and within that you start to realise that these amazing places aren't as amazing as they should be. Uh, the human impact of what we've had here is, is devastating really, and particularly the sea. We want to put down a million native oysters here and see whether we can really bring them back at scale so we can create a self-sustaining population and potentially a community fishery in the long term. And no one's done that yet in the UK and that's what we're trying to do here. And if we can do it here, we can do it elsewhere. It's only really in the last decade that people have cottoned on to the fact that we used to have these huge oyster beds everywhere and functionally significant in our ecology. And we've, we've lost all of that. The sea wilding guys here are inspirational and that knowledge exchange carries on. So we talk to Danny quite a lot about how he engages communities and the training programs he develops because we're modelling our project now in Dornoch much more around the community-based program that's going on here. It's just really empowering experience being here working with sea wilding. It just takes one person in the community to you know, start the ball rolling and that now allows us to expand to have a larger team and make more impact and you know, any community around Scotland or the UK can do similar. The older generations have been the custodians of the seas. They've let this collapse in biodiversity happen from overfishing, pollution, plastic, all this sort of stuff. Younger generations realise that it's now down to them to try and reverse some of these problems. It's a very tall order, it's a big challenge, but it is possible. Seagrass is really important uh, because it supports a huge range of biodiversity. Just like grass or a forest or a meadow on the land, the seagrass creates an actual meadow under the sea. Lots of species live on the seagrass, bigger species hide in between it, and then other animals that eat those smaller animals can also live there all the way up the food chain to the big things like the dolphins and the whales. So basically we go out and harvest the seeding stems from the seagrass and over time the seeds mature and as they do they're gradually released from the seeding stems and once they're all cleaned they go up into our chilli unit where they're stored at high salinity and low temperature and then we'll plant them out next spring. I'd like to say to the National Lottery thank you so much for the confidence you had in us to give us the funding to enable us to do what we've done. And I think you've inspired as a result lots of other projects like this and furthermore, I think, you know, the horse is bolted now. Communities around the UK realise that they can get involved, can do something active to restore marine ecosystems. And I think we're never going to stop that now. It's off and it's away. And thank you to the National Lottery for getting it going. <laughs>